Hi everyone, it's Kara Wedby with Simply Magical Vacations by Kara, your favorite magical vacation specialist, coming to you live today for our Friday News Live Show. Today is Friday, October 5th, and if you didn't know it from attending one of our other recent live shows, the Disney Shoe Collection came out today. And um, if you would like a pair of Mickey Mouse vans to celebrate his 90th birthday, um, those are running about $90 a pair. So <laughs> if you're wanting some of those, that's how much they are. And they are available starting today. So as you can see, I am dressed like one of my favorite princesses, Snow White, today. Um, and as you saw on my personal page yesterday, the Snow White Storybook dining uh, packages or dining um, reservations have been released. And so this is going to be in the Artist Point Restaurant, which is in um, the Wilderness Lodge Resort at um, Disney World. And that has access to the Magic Kingdom by a ferry. So if you happen to be at the Magic Kingdom, you just take a ferry over to the Wilderness Lodge and you can eat your meal there and come back. So very convenient um, and I'm very excited about it. So let's talk about that first. Let's talk about what the menu is gonna look like. Um, the actual meal starts on December 16th. So that's when reservations start for it. That's when the actual character meal starts at Artist Point. And it's only for dinner currently. So if you are wanting a reservation, you need to let me know. Um, it was very hard to get them. I finally got one for myself and for all my clients yesterday. Um, but it was not easy. It took a lot of searching and apparently they did not release them all at once. And so it kind of worked backwards. And I finally was able to get the ones that I needed for all the dates that I needed. But um, if you guys want one of those, please let me know if you've got an upcoming trip and you want to switch something out. Um, we can try and do that for you. So let's talk about what this meal is going to have. OK, let's talk about who's going to be there, first of all, and then what it's going to have. So on Disney's website, if you go to Artist Point uh, under things to do and then dining reservations and then click on Artist Point, It'll show you the menu, but it'll also give you this message. Beginning December 16th, Artist Point Restaurant will introduce a unique character dining experience every evening, an opportunity to meet Snow White, the Queen, and other characters in a setting that brings the beloved Disney film Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs to life. The current signature dining experience will be available through November 10th. So they're going to take from November 10th to December 16th to retheme the restaurant before it reopens as this Snow White storybook dining experience. So you heard two for sure characters there, Snow White and the Evil Queen. But it says, and other characters. So I'm not sure if they're going to rotate out the dwarves <laughs> or what. Like we had heard that it was going to be Dopey and Daw. No, wait. Dopey and Grumpy was the two we had thought they were going to have as the dwarves instead of all seven, because that would take a very long time for you to meet all seven dwarves if they were coming around your tables, unless they did like a photo op first with the dwarves and then you meet the Queen and Snow White. I, I don't know. So we don't know all that yet until people actually start going. <laughs> but um, what we do know is that you will for sure meet Snow White and the Queen and other characters. I'm assuming those include dwarfs, but I cannot tell you which ones. So um, until people start going, we won't know. But there you go. So that's who's going to be there. Um, it's going to be Starting this December, Storybook Dining at Artist Point invites you to venture into a magical forest-like setting inspired by Walt Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Brought to life through rustic decor and iconic music, we've brought this beloved fairy tale to life. During this immersive character dining experience, you'll be visited by Snow White and a few of her forest-dwelling friends. You might even have an encounter with the evil Queen. This is what Disney Parks blog is saying about it. Um, so, it, it, but on the Disney Parks actual page, it says you will meet the Queen and Snow White and other characters. So, I don't know. Um, let's see. Let's talk about the food. It's sort of going to be like the Be Our Guest dinner experience that's now um, available at the Magic Kingdom, where it's a signature dining experience, which is two table service credits, and it's $55 per adult, $33 per kid. 
if you're paying out of pocket. If you are using the dining plan though, from what I understand from reserving them is it was just one table service credit. So I don't know, I'm not for sure. I, I doubt that charging $55 a person qualifies as one table service credit on the dining plan. So I don't know if that was a typo or if they haven't fixed it yet, but the same restaurant, be our guest, that is doing the same price, it's considered a signature meal and it is a two table service credit meal. So I don't know what to tell you on that yet. Um, but that is the price if you're paying out of pocket. So here's what it's going to be. It's very similar to that meal. It's like a prefix menu where in this particular scenario, you're going to share appetizers at the table. You get to choose your own entree and then you're going to share desserts, but there'll be one of every dessert for every person at your table. Okay. So let's talk about it. Um, in addition to fun characters, a seasonal theme menu will combine classic dishes with a playful presentation. You'll begin your story with an array of delicious shared appetizers. Hunter's pie with chicken, black truffle, and stone fruit preserve. Winter squash bisque with caramel lolly and granola served in an adorable black cauldron. Wicked shrimp cocktail with soy, miso, avocado, Thai chili, and greens. And from the garden, an array of fruits, vegetables, cheese, and create your own honey butter. So that is the shared appetizers, meaning everybody's going to share that at your table. Um, for the main entrees, guests can enjoy their choice of one of the many unique dishes, such as the royal prime rib roast with horseradish mashed potato, hay smoked carrots, popover, and jus, as well as magic mirror slow braised veal shank with mashed celery root, wilted winter greens, and jus. Or if seafood is more your style, try the seafood stew with shrimp, bay scallops, mussels, tomato, and fennel. That's not all the entrees, but that's a few of them, and you get to choose one um, for each person at the table. Kids can enjoy Grumpy's Grub. This includes the same appetizers and desserts as the main menu and their choice of entree. Kids' entrees include the princess pasta with your choice of red sauce or cheese sauce, the vegetarian steam bun with crip, yeah, with crip shiitake, poison, pickles, and cilantro, the royal prime rib roast, or grilled chicken, both served with roasted potatoes and broccolini. And then for dessert, give your story a sweet ending with an array of shared desserts for the table. Sing hi-ho as you discover the miner's treasure, which is made up of sponge cake, chocolate gems, and buttercream icing, or enjoy the enchanted flavors of the fairy tale gooseberry pie, um, with meringue. You can even try a poison apple, poison is in parentheses, made of white chocolate apple mousse with a sour center. But if you're trying to impress, the hunter's gift to the queen is just the thing with the crap crackled maple popcorn and ganache. <laughs> so here's some pictures of what the shared desserts look like. So see, everybody at the table will get one. Um, this is interesting. Now, obviously, I have a ton of allergies. They're going to modify all this like they did at Be Our Guest for me, <laughs> but I think it's really cute. The theming is really cute. Um, all right, and then obviously, they're going to have lots of different beverages. If you're feeling a little thirsty when you're eating, try some of the wickedly refreshing cocktails and non-alcoholic mocktails that we've brewed up just for you. For the adults, you can sip on the Enchanted Apple with citrus vodka, sour apple, and white cranberry juice, or summon the Smoking Mirror with scotch, wild berry, lime, and rosemary smoke. If you're feeling particularly evil, <laughs> you'll love the evil to the core with silver tequila, habanero, blackberry, and orange juice. A variety of beers and wines are also available from Oregon and Washington State. So the same areas that they already served things from there because the Wilderness Lodge is based off of the Pacific Northwest. Um, Non-alcoholic options for the little miners out there include the Transformation Potion with sparkling lemonade and the stone fruit and berry breeze with an herbal tea infusion. Guests can make a journey to Disney's Wilderness Lodge to experience storybook dining at Artist Point starting December 16th of 2018. Pricing is $55 for adults and $33 for children ages 3 through 9, tax and gratuity not included. Each guest will receive one of each appetizer, their choice of an entree, and one of each dessert, as well as their choice of non-alcoholic fountain beverage. Alcoholic and non-alcoholic specialty beverages are not included. All menu items are subject to change. So that is what they are serving. That is when it is starting. 
we can now book reservations for it. So I hope you're excited, those of you that I got reservations for yesterday, because it sounds like it's going to be really cute, really fun, really well themed. And you're definitely going to meet some unique characters that you don't ever get to meet in the parks other than Snow White. So normally the dwarves are only available during parties, you know, special ticketed events. Um, so you'll at least get to meet those that most people don't get to meet. And then Snow White is usually available in Germany in Epcot. And then um, the queen, you don't get to meet unless you're at a Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party and they have her out, which is very rare. So this is definitely some rare characters. And if you love the original princess, the original movie, Snow White, it was Walt's first animated feature. He won seven Oscars for it, actually. <laughs> they did one big one and then the seven dwarfs following um, honorary Oscars. So it's definitely a huge deal, this movie. And I love that they're honoring it. And it makes sense to do it at the Wilderness Lodge because it is a forest-like setting. So I'm excited about it. I hope you are too. But that's what it will entail. So yay. Um, I also got reservations for myself for Sebastian's Bistro Dinner, which is now available at Caribbean Beach Resort um, starting October 8th. So this is exciting. If those of you who have reservations for Caribbean Beach or who have reservations next year, their construction will be done October 8th. Done. Everything will reopen. You will check in at the main building again starting October 8th. All of the restaurants will reopen then. Um, the shopping will reopen then. No more tents. No more food trucks. <laughs> Everything will be back to normal. So um, for those of you who have been staying there, while it's been undergoing this year and a half long refurbishment, I know it's not been pleasant, but you will be excited. So starting next week um, on Monday, construction is over at Caribbean Beach. You will be able to use it um, in its newly refurbished state. So I've got reservations to eat at Sebastian's, which is their table service restaurant there. And I've looked at the menu and it looks really good. We discussed it last week, but I'm very excited about that. So I'll let you know how that and the Snow White reservations go when I go in December. Um, there are so, so many, um, exciting things. Now, first of all, yesterday, we talked about this last week. We talked about the cruise line releases for this week. Um, they released to the general public yesterday, Disney Cruise Line 2020 itineraries. Um, and remember those included Hawaii and New Orleans itineraries. Um, I'm sorry to say that both of those completely sold out before we got to yesterday. So the both Hawaiian cruises and all of the New Orleans cruises have sold out. Um, here's the thing, though. What you have to understand about Disney is that they allow people to put things on hold. And this is not just for cruises. This is for Walt Disney World vacations, Disneyland, whatever. So when you put something on hold, it's on hold for three days. And you have three days before you have to make your deposit and actually book the vacation. If you don't book the vacation, then it goes back into the general public's realm and they can book it. So the people who first got a chance to put things on hold was the Platinum a castaway club members and that was on monday so apparently a lot of them put the hawaiian cruises on hold so then the next day the gold castaway club members got to got to make their reservations and apparently even more of them put it on holds to the point that the ships reached capacity so both the hawaiian cruises sold out in the first two days before the general public ever got a chance at them and there were only two hawaiian cruises so um and then i found out yesterday once they were released to the general public that the new orleans one sold out so that means <laughs> that there are a bunch of rooms on hold. It doesn't necessarily mean that you can't get a room on one of those cruises. It just means that we have to stock the website and see <laughs> like when those holds start falling off for people who don't pay their deposit, then you have a chance at it. But just so you know, the cheapest rates on a Disney cruise are when they're first released. So these rates are only going to go up as the ship fills up. In fact, from Monday to Wednesday, the prices went up on the Hawaiian cruises until they filled up. So that's how it works, just so you know. <laughs> um, if you do, if you are interested in either one of those um, ports, then we can look for you. We can try, we can watch for you, but that's really the only way to get them at this point. So just letting you know that. But the other ones they announced and that we talked about last uh, week for 2020 should still be available to book. So if you're wanting a cruise quote, just click on book now at the top of the page, fill out the form, choose my name, and I will get you a quote if it's available. All right. Disney's Boardwalk Inn is celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Nightmare Before Christmas. 
They are doing a canvas painting on the boards every Tuesday in October. How cool. So if you like the Nightmare Before Christmas and you want to do a Nightmare Before Christmas themed canvas painting, the Boardwalk Inn is offering that through the month of October on Tuesdays. Um, according to signage in the area, the southbound Magic Kingdom overpass will be opening on October 16th. So the northbound one already opened. Now they're going to have the southbound one open so that you can avoid the toll booths of the Magic Kingdom if you are just trying to go to your resort. So that is supposed to the southbound one opens October 16th. How exciting. That will help with traffic, hopefully. Um, so the Earl of Sandwich restaurant in Anaheim in downtown Disney is now reopened in its same location since Disney has not um, built that hotel yet <laughs> or said whether or not they're going to. They reopened Earl of Sandwich in its original building um, on October 1st. So if you are wanting Earl of Sandwich out in Anaheim in downtown Disney, it's reopened for a limited time is what they say. So. I guess until Disney makes up their mind on when they're going to start that hotel project or if they're going to do it, I have no clue. <laughs> but right now it's reopened. Um, beginning September 30th, buses to Disney Springs will drop off starting at 9 a.m. Service to Disney Springs will revert to the usual 8 a.m. drop off time once Disney's Typhoon Lagoon Water Park goes back to its 9 a.m. opening time. So right now for the fall, Typhoon Lagoon is opening later. And so because of that, the Disney Springs buses are going to start going later from your resort. So um, they're going to start dropping off at 9 instead of 8. The 8 a.m. one comes back when Typhoon Lagoon Water Park goes back to a 9 a.m. opening time. So just FYI on that. Because... Disney Springs, all of the stores don't open till 10. So there's really no reason for you to be there at 8 unless you're taking the transfer bus from there to Typhoon Lagoon. So there you go. Um, next bit of news. Oh, and also remember, buses to Disney Springs from all four parks are still available starting at 4 p.m. daily. It doesn't go reverse. You can't go from Disney Springs to a park, but you can go from a park to Disney Springs starting at 4 p.m. every day. Um, and that's been going on for a while. Okay. If you go on your My Disney Experience account on a regular computer instead of the app, you will notice a major change that happened this week in advance of the new ticket pricing system that will go in effect October 16th. Have you noticed that a lot of things are happening October 16th? <laughs> so they redid, revamped the My Disney Experience homepage um, to go along with the new vacation planning thing they're doing. It's okay. Um, I've used it several times this week for clients. It, it's just weird. You kind of have to get used to it. Um, and it puts everything kind of in one feed now under a date rather than separating it out. Like used to it, it had your fast passes listed and then right under that, you're not actually dining and then right under that your fast passes. So you could see them all together at once in each category, but now it has it by the day and it's sort of like your itinerary, but just on the main page now. Um, if you knew how it did it before. So now it has under my plans is where this is. So you can't go under my reservations and tickets anymore. That doesn't exist. So you click on my plans and then it lists all your plans. And so it has like these icons at the top. So it's got the people one, which is your family and friends. It's got, um, the hotel one, that means you have a hotel reservation. It's got the ticket one, that means you have tickets. It's got dining, which means you have dining reservations. And then it's got Fast Pass Plus, which means you have Fast Pass reservations. So that's how it'll appear now, and it'll show what you have linked so far. So you can see which family and friends share plans and create your, your vacation together. So their names will appear there. Their little icon that they chose will appear there on the this side. And then if you have a hotel reservation with them, it'll be blackened. If you have tickets with them, those will be blackened. If you have dining reservations, that will be blackened. If you have fast passes, that will be. So that's what the new look is. Um, you can view your daily itineraries and tickets at a glance, add or change plans easily. So here's what an individual day looks like. So it says like Saturday, July 28th at 3 p.m. You check into your hotel right there where those lines are. It says your hotel reservation number. If you have a link you can click on to get more details, it shows who in your party on your family and friends list is in that room. It lets you do online check-in right here, which I do for you. And then it says change if you need to change anything, which you won't do. <laughs> That's something you're traveling to this. Um, and then... I went on and took a picture of mine, a screenshot, so you can see it. So there's how it looks at the top. It says My Disney Experience. 
it says Kara's Plans and Tickets. It has Belle, because that's who I chose as my icon. Then it shows that I have um, family and friends going with me. I have a hotel reservation. I have uh, tickets linked, and I have dining reservations so far. Then it says make a selection because I can do fast passes. And this is great. I like that they added this. Um, it says when you can make fast passes. So it says make your selections for your stay starting at 7 a.m. Eastern on October 29, 2018. So it tells people exactly when and what day is their 60 days out um, if they have a hotel reservation. So I know that as your agent, but I kind of like that they put that on there for people because I get people asking me all the time, isn't today my 60 days out? And I'm like, no, because <laughs> the calendar didn't go exactly that way. So it's not literally 60 days. It's, yeah. So. It, this thing actually tells you now when that's supposed to be. Um, let's see. The next part I screenshot was the, as you scroll down under that, it says my plans, reservations, and tickets. Right here, it says daily itinerary, which lists each day the resort you're staying at, um, your fast passes, your dining if you have them. Then the second thing over here says tickets. <laughs> Sorry, that's one of my clients. The second thing under here says tickets and memory maker. So you click on the blue part that says tickets and memory maker and it shows who in your party has tickets, what kind of ticket, and down as you scroll to the bottom, it shows your memory maker, who it's linked to, and what the memory maker confirmation number is. Um, and then, Yeah, it still has issues. This uh, When I screenshot this, it says, we cannot display your dining reservations right now. It did. I just hit the refresh button at the top of the page and it fixed it. Sometimes when I log in to mine or other people's accounts since they changed it, it doesn't show that we have tickets. Like the ticket thing isn't grayed out even though we have the rever reservation that we bought tickets with. So if you push that refresh button at the top of the page, when it refreshes, it lights everything up. So I don't no, I'm sure they're still going to work out kinks with it, but I know that this is in preparation for the new October 16th ticket pricing change. So anyway, um, it said, you know, first day of the trip, and then it says check in at 3 p.m. So uh, that, and then it says all the details of my reservation, which I did not screenshot because that's none of your business. <laughs> so um, that is what the new website looks like. So if you actually, this is actually mydisneyexperience.com. You actually have to go on a computer or on your phone and type in that address. It's not on your app that way. The app was updated a while back. So, and now I guess the website is with the app. Yes, yeah, Sebastian's is seafood themed. And ironically enough, Eileen, they have crab cakes, <laughs> which I think is like cannibalistic a little bit for poor Sebastian, but whatever. Um, so yeah, it is seafood based, but they do have other things. Um, I believe I saw a steak and they have some sandwiches and they have these really, it's like Caribbean island themed. Um, and so they have like Caribbean bowls, like rice bowls and jasmine rice and what, you know, like it's, it's that kind of theme, but definitely lots of seafood, but they do have other meats just in case. I think they had jerk chicken and that they had curry, a bunch of different kinds of curry. So it looks like it's going to be really flavorful. Um, all right. Miguel joins a musical celebration of Coco as Plaza de la Familia returns to Disney's California Adventure Park on November 4th. Actually, now through November 4th for Dia de los Muertos, which is November 1st. So if you are out in Disneyland, California Adventure's got that going on from the movie Coco. And like I said at the beginning of the video, the Disney van collection has been released today. Um, to help maintain an excellent guest experience for those impacted by resort refurbishments around the Walt Disney World Resort, resort refillable mugs purchased at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge or Disney's Coronado Springs Resort are now automatically activated for complimentary use at Disney's Typhoon Lagoon Water Park and Disney's Blizzard Beach Water Park. Activation will be made at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge or Disney's Coronado Springs Resort and this service will be available to all guests staying at either resort until further notice. So. Because of the inconvenience right now of the construction going on at Coronado Springs and Animal Kingdom Lodge, especially at the pool, the pools of both locations, since you can't use the beverage station or be at the main pool where the beverage station is, they're letting you use your refillable resort mug to get beverages for free, which is what the mug is, um, at Typhoon Lagoon and Blizzard Beach Water Park. So if you're wanting to go there and use their pools and then get beverages while you're there, just people staying in those two resorts now can do that. And it'll be activated when you activate your mug at either Animal Kingdom Lodge or Cornell Springs until further notice. So until the construction is done at those pools probably, um, which at Animal Kingdom is supposed to be December. And then at 
Coronado Springs, I'm not sure. They just started that refurbishment, so it just depends on how long it takes. Um, all right, Disney is now accepting dining reservations for Sebastian's Bistro, Bistro at Caribbean Beach. We just talked about that. Both lunch and dinner are available, and reservations can be made for dates as early as October 8th because that's when everything reopens at Caribbean Beach. Um, reservations can be made online or through the My Disney Experience app, and I did mine online. Um, it replaces shutters as the resort's table service restaurant and will offer up guests fresh dishes with flares of Latin and Caribbean flavors. Okay, Eileen, I'm going to go into more detail now. <laughs> um, food offerings will range from seafood and steak entrees to burgers and salads. Sebastian's Bistro will also feature an array of unique alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages. So not just seafood. Okay, some sad news. <laughs> Now, normally at this time of year, Disney will up prices of food around the parks, like snacks and drinks and things like that. But they normally do it at like such a small percentage that you don't really notice. But they did it this week and it was not small. So everyone noticed. <laughs> and they not only raise prices for snacks and drinks in the parks, but they also raise prices at quick service restaurants, at some of the buffets like Beer Garden in Germany and Epcot. Um, at some of, oh, at the Food and Wine Festival booze, some of the prices have gone up. So lots of price raises this week at Disney um, for food and beverages. So just a heads up, it is now making the dining plan a lot more um, valuable. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. I mean, once you hear these prices, you'll know why. Um, bottled sodas have risen to $4.50, up from $4.00. Fountain sodas have increased from $3.29 for a regular and $3.79 for a large to $3.99 for a regular and $4.49 for a large. The price increases has, have also hit water bottles with prices rising from $3 to $3.50. Now, I have told you multiple times, do not use your snack credit for a water bottle. <laughs> Go to any quick service location and ask for some ice water. They have to give it to you for free. Moving on. Um, cart offerings have also been hit by the increase. A Mickey pretzel has risen to $7. Okay, and these pretzels aren't that big. A Mickey pretzel is now $7, an increase of one whole dollar from the previous price. Um, ice cream novelties have risen to $5.75, which is a Mickey ice cream premium bar and others from $5 in June, while frozen bananas have risen by 50 cents to $5.75, matching their ice cream counterparts. Frozen fruit offerings, including lemonade, strawberry bars, and frozen strawberry bars, have also matched the 75 cent increase through their price, though their prices vary. Most notably, churros are currently $6.25, a whopping $1.75 up from their former price. So if you are wanting a snack at Disney, and this has hit everything. So popcorn, the bucket is $10, the refillable bucket, but now the refill is $2. It used to be $1.50 or $1.75, depending on what refill you're we're getting. Um, if you want a Dole Whip, the price has gone up significantly. So if you do have a dining plan and you have two snack credits per day, these snack credits are now a lot more valuable. <laughs> so I don't know if they're trying to price these out of the snack credit price or what, but it is it is very expensive. Um, quite an increase, a dollar, a whole dollar for most things. That's, that's a huge increase. Um, on October 20th, the Muppets-themed quick service restaurant at Disney's Hollywood Studios Pizza Rizzo will be closed and enter a seasonal operation. We talked about the rumor that this might happen last week. It is. Disney announced it. Pizza Rizzo used to be the Toy Story-themed Pizza Planet quick service restaurant featuring an arcade in the dining area, much like the restaurant from the Toy Story films. In July of 2016, Disney announced that the former restaurant would be closing and would be rethemed to Pizza Rizzo because it's in the Muppets area of the Hollywood Studios Park, and it reopened in November of 2016. Um, so now it's going into seasonal operations starting October 20th. It's set to reopen spring of 2019 is what they say. We shall see because I think they'll need that area for Galaxy's Edge. <laughs> so we shall see. Um, next price increase yesterday happened at Magic Kingdom. The standard price of a regular fountain beverage was $3.29. Now on October 2nd, it changed to $3.99. So that, those just happened at the Magic Kingdom. Mobile order menus will show you on the My Disney Experience app that it is the case at all the quick service restaurants in the Magic Kingdom. 
A hot dog with chips is now $9.49. A churro is $5.89 with chocolate sauce, $3.99 for Cokes. This is the former price before they went up. Um, let's see. Violet's Force Field Punch and Dash's Super Lemonade from Incredible Summer and Tomorrowland of the Magic Kingdom have been renamed and will stick around in the post-Incredible Summer Tomorrowland. Um, they are now going to be the Interstellar Punch and the Super Lemonade. And those were expensive. I think they were like $6.99 a piece or something. But they are still there. They just renamed them. Um, okay. This is also about Caribbean Beach. So along with the new additions, with the reopening of the main building, the main check-in area, all the restaurants, the new restaurants, the shopping areas, the new quick service grab-and-go areas, Central Market, all that stuff, on October 8th at Caribbean Beach Resort, they are also renaming two of the islands. So there used to be a Trinidad North and a Trinidad South. Um, Trinidad North is being renamed Barbados because they flattened Barbados to build the Riviera DVC Resort. <laughs> so they are renaming Trinidad North to be Barbados, and Trinidad South will now just be called Trinidad. Also starting October 8th, the existing entrance on Buena Vista Drive will close, and the new entrance on Victory Way near to Art of Animation will become the entrance for cars and buses. So there you go, because the Riviera will have its own entrance, and it'll be over towards the other side. Um... The old resort vehicle entrance will become the entry for Disney's Riviera Resort, a new Disney Vacation Club property. Work is also continuing on the Disney Skyliner Station at Caribbean Beach, which will open at a later time. Just in time for the Halloween season, Vampirina, or V as she's known, has joined the breakfast fun at Disney Junior Play and Dine at Hollywood and Vine at Disney's Hollywood Studios. And that actually happened uh, Wednesday. So she's now part of that breakfast. From the Disney Junior series Vampirina, which blends spooky, fun, heartfelt storytelling and Broadway caliber music in stories that follow V as she faces the joys and trials of being the new kid in town after her family moves from Transylvania to Pennsylvania, including making friends and attending a new school in the human world. Along the way, V learns that it may be easier to blend in with her peers, but it's much more valuable to celebrate the qualities that make each individual unique. And Vampirina is not just here for Halloween, she's here to stay. Starting this November, you'll be able to meet her every day in an all-new character greeting location in the park's animation courtyard. V will be hanging out in a replica of her room on the show and excited to see you and snap a photo. If you have little ones who love Vampirina, you'll definitely want to put Disney Junior's Play and Dine Breakfast at Hollywood Studios on your must-do list. All right. So starting, we have now have a date of when the Tomorrowland Speedway will close for its track refurbishment so that it can reroute it so that it doesn't interfere with the new Tron Coasters um, construction that is coming to Tomorrowland in the Magic Kingdom. So January 2nd is the date. Starting January 2nd, Tomorrowland Speedway will close for its refurbishment and be unavailable until summer of 2019. It'll be a six month long refurbishment that will see a slight alteration to the current track layout of the Speedway. But they are not changing any theming of the Speedway, any of the cars in the Speedway, anything else that we know of. So it's gonna stay mostly the same, um, but the track is gonna be rerouted for the new roller coaster. Um, also, another increase has happened at uh, Epcot at the Food and Wine Festival at all of the drink booths, including alcoholic beverages. They are now more expensive. <laughs> yep. uh, Peter Pan's flight will be closed January 7th of 2019 through February 2nd of 2019. It is unknown what work will be taking place during this closure, but that is when it's under refurbishment. So no fast passes for Peter Pan's flight from January 7th through February 2nd of 2019. I am most excited about this announcement other than the Snow White dining. <laughs> okay, so this one, you will see me with this eventually whenever I'm trying to get my lighting to fix itself. I don't know what's going on. But you will be seeing me with this as soon as... Um, they release them and I can purchase them online. So there are four new spirit jerseys coming out at both parks, Disneyland and Disney World, and they are attraction specific. I have been begging Disney for this one particular spirit jersey 
four years and it's finally here whether you're a foolish mortal looking for a tropical hideaway setting sail for the Caribbean or taking the happiest cruise that ever sailed there'll be a new way to show your love Disney style has revealed that four iconic Disney parks attractions will be getting their own spirit jerseys at Disneyland and Walt Disney World soon <laughs> and the first one is Haunted Mansion it is a purple spirit jersey and the words glow in the dark and at the bottom is the wallpaper from the Haunted Mansion. This will be mine. Um, here's the front of it. Oh my gosh, how cute. And it says ghost toast on the, on the front there. Yep, that will be mine. Um, the other attraction spirit jerseys are going to be the Enchanted Tiki Room with the little tiki birds on there and it's green. Um, and then small worlds so if you're getting it from disneyland it'll say disneyland on the back and if you're getting it from walt disney world it'll say walt disney world in the color of the small world attraction the front of it has the little clock face and then it has the happiest cruise that ever sailed and then on the bottom it has the small it's a small world attraction buildings finally pirates of the caribbean i like this one too is getting a spirit jersey so on the back, it'll say Disneyland or Walt Disney World, and it's red and black striped. And on the front, it says Pirates of the Caribbean and has a pirate. Yay! And I feel like this is probably just the beginning of these attraction spirit jerseys. Hopefully, we'll see other attractions get one. But definitely, these jerseys are supposed to be in stock at Disney Parks later this month. We don't know exactly what day. So I will be stocking the websites until they come up. <laughs> Because I have been wanting the Haunted Mansion one or them to make a Haunted Mansion spirit jersey since the spirit jerseys were invented. Um, okay, the featured flatbread of the month at Pinocchio Village Haas is the apple butter, apples, brie, and chicken apple sausage fat flatbread for $11.99. And that's interesting. I guess it's fall flavors. <clears throat> I'm excited about this too. Alex and Ani is has made a new Disney Cruise Line Alex and Annie bracelet. It's a it's a wheel. And um, they come in silver and golds, but they are exclusive to the Disney Dream and the Disney Fantasy ships. I will be on the wonder. This makes me sad. Why can't you have the Alex and Annie bracelets on every ship, Disney? You have the Pandora charms on every ship. <laughs> so whatever. Anyway, they have this new bracelet exclusive to Disney Cruise Line ships. Um, if you like Alex and Ani and you would like one. Price increases. Here's another one. In effect, all around Disneyland and Disney World on snacks and beverages, the Dole Whip now costs $5.69, up from $4.99. The Dole Whip float is a whopping $6.49. And then their water bottles there, um, or regular fountain drink, is now $3.99 at Disneyland. The Disney by Rock Love Jewelry Collection has a Nightmare Before Christmas set, and it is now available. So if Nightmare Before Christmas is one of your favorites, here is the new jewelry available by Rock Love Jewelry. There's go there's uh, the dog, Zero. It's a little duck on wheels. So, yeah, that is now available. Oh, we have now heard this week that there will be the next live action movie they're going to do at Disney is a Lilo and Stitch live action remake, and it is already in the works. At Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge, there is a new safari scavenger hunt. You can complete your scavenger hunt and win a surprise. Visit the front desk and pick up your clue guide and start searching. How fun. I love scavenger hunts. Oh, at the Wilderness Lodge where the Snow White dining package is, they are going to have, uh, they always have, a hidden Mickey scavenger hunt that you can do. So just ask for that at the front desk as well. <laughs> eh, doorbell. A recent <laughs> Disneyland Paris ticket offer reveals an upcoming gate price increase. Um, it's going to be 104 euros for adults and 97 euros for kids from November 7th starting November 7th. And this is for a one day, two park ticket valid for 12 months, except for blockout dates of December 22nd through January 6th. So that is price increase coming to Disneyland Paris tickets. Um, there is a new Kate Spade collection coming exclusively to Disney parks. This new collection offers a minimalist text forward style with pops of glitter and some of your favorite quotes from beloved Disney movies and Walt Disney himself. There's a wristlet 
um, that actually seems big enough to be a park bag and also like a tote bag and it's set to premiere at Disney parks by the end of October. So um, they're really cute. Like one of them says, we have made the fairy tale fashionable again, Walt Disney. That's the wristlet. And I think that the tote says faith, trust and pixie dust or something like that. Uh, Disney Style reports that there is also a new Disney by Terez collection. It's now available on Terez's online shop. Apparently, they make uh, really colorful leggings and tops. So this new collection is available on the Terez site, and it's already on there. It's T-E-R-E-Z. I've never heard of them, but they have a Mickey collection for his birthday. Um, this weekend only, there are special rainbow snacks and souvenirs available only at Disneyland Resort. So that is just this weekend only if you're wanting some rainbow treats. Um, let's see. John Favreau has revealed the title and the synopsis for the Star Wars TV series, The Mandalorian is the name of it. Despite the box office performance of Solo, a Star Wars story, the Star Wars franchise has seen massive success over the last four years. So they are delving into new territory. Thanks to Disney launching a streaming service of its own in 2019, the first ever live action Star Wars TV show will be a part of the lineup. It is being written and produced by Iron Man and the Jungle Book director, John Favreau, and it's going to be called The Mandalorian. Details on the series have been hard to come by as Lucasfilm has yet to confirm anything. Rumors continued to the point <laughs> to the Mandalorians being at the center of Favreau's focus, but there were still no signs of any official news about the series, despite set photos indicating the filming was about to begin. Favreau has now come out and confirmed details about the series on his Instagram account. He first confirmed that the series is called The Mandalorian, although it could ultimately reveal, be unveiled to be the Star Wars The Mandalorian, or some variation. I'm definitely going to have to get the Disney streaming service. So here is the background of this particular series, The Mandalorian. After the stories of Jango and Boba Fett, another warrior emerges in the Star Wars universe. The Mandalorian is set after the fall of the Empire and before the emergence of the First Order. We follow the travails of a lone gunfighter in the outer reaches of the galaxy far from the authority of the New Republic. So that is the storyline for the show. Here's another rumor that came out on ScreenRant.com. The Walt Disney Company's acquisition of 21st Century Fox, Fox's movie and TV assets, namely Hollywood Studio 20th Century Fox, may wrap up by the end of 2018. They think it's going faster than they thought it would. They thought it would be summer of 2019, but now they're saying it could close, that deal could close, and Disney could own Fox as soon as the end of this year. So we'll see. Okay, so as far as the Snow White Dining goes, somebody asked uh, Disney on Twitter, Disney World, um, if the menu would be the same the whole year or if it would be seasonal, the one that I just read to you. And they said that the menu on the website is the current menu that will be offered, but they're... Um, it will be a seasonal menu. So the menu changes seasonally at the new Storybook Diner with Snow White. So what I just read to you is the winter menu. So once winter ends, then they will replace some of those things with a different seasonal menu items. So we'll see. So those of you going in the spring, you may have something different than what I just named. Now the desserts will probably stay pretty similar, um, but the appetizers might change because there's a summer a winter squash soup on there and I would think that they wouldn't do that in the summer. So we'll see. Um, let's see, just in time for National Taco Day, Pecos Bill Tall Tale Inn and Cafe is now offering a taco of the month. National Taco Day was yesterday. Um, this month you could enjoy the buffalo chicken taco topped with garlic ranch slaw and blue cheese. Nummy. Pecos Bills is one of my favorite quick services. And that's in the Magic Kingdom. 
Disney's Dream Big Princess campaign uses the stories of fictional heroines like Moana and Tiana and real-life mo role models to encourage kids around the globe to follow their dreams. The new Dream Big Princess video series puts the next generation of female storytellers behind the camera to tell the stories of inspirational role models. On October 11th, which has been declared the International Day of the Girl by the United Nations, we're inviting guests at Disney parks around the world to Disney Bound in outfits inspired by their favorite female Disney characters, following the special events costume guidelines at each Disney resort location, of course. Whether your favorite character is clever, kind, compassionate, creative, adventurous, ambitious, fearless, confident, brave, or all of the above, we want to see you celebrate their iconic style and spirit. Disney bounding can include color schemes, patterns, accessories, and more that speak to your favorite character. Um, I'm Disney bounding as Snow White, but <laughs> not really. If I was Disney bounding, I would have red, blue, and yellow in the order she wears them on her dress, but I wouldn't necessarily have this on that actually mimics her dress. So that's what Disney bounding is rather than just wearing like a costume. Um, let's see. There are so many empowering female characters to choose from. If you can't choose just one, team up with friends and family to celebrate an entire group of them. You might just find yourself featured right here on the Disney Parks blog in your Disney Bound Best. And stay tuned for the premiere of Hashtag Dream Big Princess video series this month, celebrating the inspiring stories and words of advice from female trailblazers across industries and around the world, captured by 21 talented young women from 13 countries. From October 10th through November 20th, 2018, for each like or share of a public video or photo with the hashtag dream big princess on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, Disney worldwide services will donate us uh, $1 to girl up the United nations foundations program, supporting girls leadership and empowerment. The minimum donation is $500,000 that they will make. And the maximum donation is 1 million for more information about girl up, go to girlup.org. And then it wants you to read the entire guidelines of the parks. <laughs> no masks. You can use face paint, but no masks. No weapons or anything that looks like a weapon. All right. Um, so price increases at the beer garden restaurant in Germany. It's a buffet. Um, at Epcot and previously the restaurant offered a separate price for lunch and dinner. Lunch was $35 for adults and $19 for children and dinner was $41 for adults and $22 for children. As of today, there is not only, uh, there's no longer a difference between lunch and dinner pricing and there is also an overall price increase up to $44 for adults and $24 for children. Um, let's see. Also, price increases on the All-American Burger with Fries at the Liberty Inn, which is um, a quick service restaurant um, in, well, is this Casey's Corner? I don't know. There's a hot dog that went up. <laughs> the All-American Burger with Fries went from $12.49 to uh, up to $12.49 for $12.99. And the Mac and Cheese Hot Dog with Fries went from $11.29 to $11.79. And, of course, the Fountain Beverage prices have increased as well. This was in Epcot at the Liberty Inn. Um, Olivia's Cafe is a table service restaurant located at Disney's Old Key West Resort. They have a fantastic comfort food at affordable prices, friendly servers, great drinks, and you can usually get a reservation because most people don't know about it. It's a hidden gem. Um, they also have some really great fried chicken. So recently, Olivia's added a brunch menu containing options from both the breakfast and lunch menu. The brunch menu is available on Saturdays and Sundays from 7.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. at Olivia's in Old Key West. Um, one of their signature dishes, the banana bread French toast, is a must for anyone who enjoys a sweet breakfast or lunch now, <laughs> brunch, whatever. It's a rather, rather sizable portion with three big pieces of French toast made with banana bread, covered in a sweet mixture of coconut whipped cream and a banana rum syrup. This is worth a trip to Olivia's on its own. <laughs> so definitely really, really good. Um, all right. There is a new patent application, according to wdwinfo.com. 
um, that Disney just filed about virtual reality and your friends being able to participate in your virtual reality experience through social media. This is interesting. Experiences today are all about being interactive and most successful games advertise the ability to play with friends from around the world. Virtual reality technology has some difficulties when it comes to interactivity though. Not everyone has an open room full of expensive equipment to use at a moment's notice. A new patent application by Disney Enterprises Inc. aims to solve this problem by letting users without VR our headsets to take part in someone else's virtual reality adventure. The patent application, which published yesterday, titled Incorporating External Guests into a Virtual Reality Environment, describes a system where virtual reality gamers' experience could be influenced by friends playing from their computer, phone, or tablet. In that regard, interacting with one or more other versions in a VR environment is a powerful way to develop an immersive VR experience from Disney's um, application. Among other things, interactions with other guests are oftentimes richer, more engaging, and less predictable than interactions with scripted video characters and the like. However, because of the logistical difficulties and costs associated with implementing room-scale VR with multiple guests, especially remotely located guests, incorporating human interactions into a room-scale VR experience um, has not been feasible for many users. So creating an immersive VR experience requires some sophisticated tech. Not only must the user see and hear a believable fantasy environment through high-end headsets, location technology must be able to track their physical movement and body position so that they can properly interact with their said environment. So how would someone using only a tablet be able to take part? mostly through sound and two-dimensional images or video. Imagine that during your VR adventure, you come upon a mystical creature, a troll maybe. As you communicate with the troll, its actions are actually being controlled by a friend at home whose augmented voice is what you're hearing speak. Or maybe you find a magical talking sword, but as you swing it about, the voice emanating from the blade is really that of one of your friends. How about a Cinderella style magic mirror as a patent application image suggests where the image you are speaking back to or the image you see speaking back to you is a video of a player at home taken using the recording technology available on just about all phones, tablets, or computers. The addition of an interactive component could increase interest in virtual reality gaming on both sides. Users with the full headset get up directly in the simulated world and players at home who'd like to get in on the fun and add a few surprises to their friends experience. So as must always be stated, the existence of an application for a patent does not guarantee its approval, nor does an approved patent mean that this technology will ever see the light of day. But Disney has created it, and it sure sounds interesting. Oh, back to Caribbean Beach, the Sebastian um, Sebastian's Bistro, here is the menu. So appetizers include Jamaican meat pies, Marauder snack, conch fritters, crab cakes, I don't know why, because it's Sebastian's a crab. <laughs> Raw sliced tuna, Caribbean pull apart rolls, seasonal tropical fruit, arepa, and grilled jerk chicken wings. So those are the appetizers available at lunch. Sandwiches that are available at lunch include a crab cake topped burger, smoked turkey on ciabatta, island curry eggless salad sandwich, plant based bon mi sandwich. The lunch main entrees include grilled skirt steak chimichurri, jerk chicken, kale, and mixed green salad. Um, let's see. And then you can have a kale and mixed green salad with grilled fish, a kale and mixed green salad with grilled shrimp, a kale and mixed green salad with grilled chicken, or a jerk chicken salad. Desserts at lunch include warm chocolate pudding, message in a bottle, mile marker zero, Bonoff tart, and a floating island. For kids, the appetizers include a house salad, conch fritters with chili mayo, seasonal tropical fruit, or carrots and celery sticks. Their entrees include whole grain penne, grilled jerk chicken, grilled shrimp skewer, beef and mushroom blended burger, Jamaican meat pies, or slow cooked pork shoulder. Then sides, where you can choose two, include sauteed green beans, jerk roasted butternut squash, collie fries with carrot ketchup, pizza biscuit, black beans and rice, and yellow rice. Sounds really interesting. Um, oh wait, that's not all the sides. Macaroni and cheese, pineapple cloud with banana and orange, sliced apples, vanilla gelato with fruit and chocolate sauce, Tinkerbell and friends, or Buzz Lightyear punch. 
For dinner, the appetizers include Jamaican meat pies, Marner snack, conch fritters, and the prices seem to be the same as at lunch for the appetizers, um, grilled jerk chicken wings, crab cake, raw sliced tuna, Sebastian's house salad, Caribbean pull apart rolls, seasonal tropical fruit, or arepa. Dinner main dishes include slow cooked pork shoulder, sauteed shrimp and tamales, jerk chicken, sustainable fish, Caribbean goat curry, jerk butternut squash, Caribbean vegetable curry, citrus stuffed sustainable whole fish, or grilled skirt steak chimichurri. For desserts at dinner, you have warm chocolate pudding, message in the bottle, mile marker zero, the Bonoff tart, or the floating islands. They also will have Joffrey's locally roasted coffee at lunch and dinner, and that also includes a press pot option. They have soda and fountain beverages, Oddwall lemonade, Zico coconut water, fresh brewed iced tea, passion fruit iced tea, Twinings of London Hot Tea, Large Leaf Discovery Collection, The Peachcomber, Mutiny Punch, and Lamb Lubber Lemonade. And then, of course, they have a ton of specialty cocktails, beers, and wines, all from the Caribbean. So that is what the menu looks like at Sebastian's. Sebastian's Bistro at Caribbean Beach, opening Monday, October 8th, when the rest of Caribbean Beach reopens. So exciting. Hmm, interesting. So if you're an annual pass holder and you get a reservation at the new Snow White Storybook Dining Restaurant at Artist Point, you will get a 10% discount if you use your annual pass. Now, I have tables in Wonderland, which is a 20% discount, so I'm hoping they take that too. It's a better discount. Um, the new princess uh, cake, like mini cake at Amaret's Patisserie is Moana themed. It's a petite cake is what they call it. To celebrate Moana's return to the big screen, uh, today um, at AMC Theaters, available now through October 7th while supplies last. There's what the little Moana Petite Cake looks like at Emirates Patisserie in Disney Springs to go with the Dream Big Princess movies. Interesting. As Star Wars Galaxy's Edge draws nearer to its opening in 2019, new details on the land keep spilling out. Now we have new details in the Millennium Falcon attraction that will be one of the two attractions in the land thanks to makingstarwars.net. Building off of what we have told you already in many news videos, the Millennium Falcon attraction will feature randomized missions. Hondo is the owner of Hondo Onaka's Transport Solutions and he is sending your crew on a mission to Corellia. Before you enter the ride, you will see the Falcon outside. As you go in and have some sort of encounter with Hondo, you board the Falcon from an underground on the planet of Batu. Um, we assume the idea is that the ship lowered underground to let you board that way. This means that you will be able to see the outside of the Millennium Falcon before you even board the attraction. Also, the idea that you meet Hondo outside of the Falcon makes it sound like there's going to be some sort of live actor or audio animatronic in the queue for the Millennium Falcon ride. The ride experience itself will initially take place in between Episode 8 and Episode 9 of Star Wars, but will be updated possibly yearly as the Star Wars canon changes with new movies. So here's the three missions that it will start with, according to this website. Mission Scenario 1, Hondo gets you involved in a race on Corellia that he's sure you can't lose with the Millennium Falcon. Mission Scenario 2, Hondo sends you to the First Order shipyard on Corellia, possibly on a mission for the Resistance. Mission Scenario number 3, your crew will have to steal some piece of cargo, but the cargo is guarded by a giant monster similar to the Maw from Solo, A Star Wars Story, and you'll have to evade the creature like the mythic heroes stealing the treasure from the sleeping dragon. Disney is touting the attraction as being fully controlled by you, the guest, meaning a successful mission could give riders credits to use in the land. Galactic credits is what they're calling them. Conversely, a successful mission could mean a bounty will be on your head. An unsuccessful mission could mean a bounty will be on your head as you walk through the land. In other Star Wars Galaxy's Edge news, a recent commercial filmed by Disney seems to point to the idea that there will be an opportunity for premium access to the land probably for Disneyland since it opens there first. This will likely be in the form of a hard ticket event for guests to experience the land without the anticipated crowds. I wonder what that's going to cost. <laughs> we'll have to see. Due to the expected draw for the land, a hard ticket experience would be a good opportunity for diehard Star Wars fans to experience Galaxy's Edge as intended without swarms of people in the way and long lines for the attractions. So stay tuned. 
that sounds like a really fun ride. Right now, they say the ride's mostly done and they're actually installing it now into both lands. Um, the only thing they were still working on was motion sickness. Um, obviously, they don't want anybody to get sick <laughs> on the ride. And apparently, since it's like such high tech and so immersive, and I think they have eight projectors going just for one thing, um, it was making people a little sick. So they're trying to calibrate that a little bit so that, um, you know, people could enjoy the ride. But it's definitely a simulator. It's definitely you, simulating you driving the Millennium Falcon. All right. And whatever you do in your mission, whether it's successful or unsuccessful, then it will affect your galactic credits either in your Mind Disney Experience account or maybe on the Disney Play app. I'm not really sure about where that goes yet, but there will be credits. Um, the new, there are new World Showcase shot glasses, pint glasses, and ornament collection released at Epcot. Annual pass holder items and a collector's box are also included in this new release. So it's for each country in the World Showcase. They have ornaments, pint glasses, shot glasses, and an annual pass holder collection. Okay, here's another story. Deadlines, Nellie and Dereva reports that ABC Studios Alternative Division is producing Ink and Paint, an eight-episode documentary series focusing on several women who have worked for Disney's animation department throughout its history. The series is based on the book Ink and Paint, The Women of Walt Disney's Animation by Mindy Johnson, which was published last year. And Dereva's article also notes that filming is already underway and the production crew recently interviewed 108-year-old Ruthie Thompson, who began work at Disney in 1937 as a self Cleaner and worked her way to become a supervising scene planner. How cool! Um, at the studio's old ink and paint building. The series is expected to premiere when the streaming service, Disney's streaming service, launches in 2019. The article also reveals that the Alternative Division is also developing a second documentary series for the service, the focus of which hasn't been made public yet. Yay! I love documentaries. Oh, announced today, Disneyland Paris Run Weekend is going to be September 19th through 22nd of 2019. So you people that like to run the Disneyland Paris races, that is when it will be next year. Price increases. <laughs> I think I've mentioned these, but here's another one. Um... There are other price increases to other iconic park snacks like churros, Mickey Pretzels, popcorn. Snack carts in Epcot Future World have also seen increases. Cool Wash, which sells classic frozen slush drinks, have now gone up from $4.50 per slush to $5.50. That is a dollar. That is a huge increase, okay? Normally, they're only doing like 25 cent increases. So that, that's pretty huge. Um, and we've talked about the water bottle and the bottled, bottled sodas, and the pretzels are now $7.00. Goodness gracious. Um, mm -hmm. Popcorn pricing for refills is up to $2 a refill. But the bucket price remains the same at $10. So cotton candy has now gone up as well. Individual boxes of popcorn and cotton candy are now $5 a piece at Disney Snack Carts. $5 for cotton candy. I mean, that's like air, like sugar air. <laughs> um, the popcorn cart by Mission Space, you'll also find churros, which have gone up to $5.25. However, note that these are not served with chocolate sauce. In locations where a churro is served with chocolate sauce, they are, have gone up to $6.25. So apparently, that chocolate sauce is worth a dollar. Turkey legs have gone up from $11.75 at the Fife and Drum Tavern in Epcot to $13.25. And Mickey ice cream bars and other ice cream novelties have gone up too. The premium Mickey ice cream bar used to run you $5. It is now $5.75. The Dole Whip at the Magic Kingdom is the Dole Whip cup. Used to be uh, $4.49. Now it's $4.99. The pineapple float used to be $5.49. Now it's $5.99. And the Dole Whip pineapple upside down cake used to be $6.49. And now it is $6.99. Um, yeah. So maybe the snack credits aren't that bad of a deal now. In Disneyland Park, the reopening date of the Matterhorn bobsleds after their refurbishment is finally known. It will be Friday, November 16th. 
Jedi Training Academy is going to end its run at Disneyland, only Disneyland, on November 4th. The Walt Disney World version is safe for now. No one else plans for an updated version when Galaxy's Edge opens. So Disneyland is losing the Jedi training that you can sign up your kids age 4 through 12 up for starting November 4th. You will no longer be able to do that in Disneyland. Um, Flamingo Crossings, which is the area um, near Disney World where they have a ton of hotels and they're adding more. And those are on the Good Neighbor Hotels that I can book for you for Disney World. Flamingo Crossings area is also adding 1,300 new student housing type apartments for the Disney interns that work in the Disney College program. So they just announced that today and some permits that were filed. Final announcement today is from Norwegian Cruise Line. Now, remember at the first of this video, I talked about um, Disney Cruise Line's Hawaiian cruises being sold out already and the New Orleans cruises being sold out or almost sold out for 2020. Um, that's sad. However, and you know, holds my fa fallout on those. People may not pay their deposits. There may be some rooms open up. But even if they don't, let me tell you about a cruise line who has a ship based in Hawaii. It is the only American-based ship Okay, every other cruise line, because the Jones Act is based out of a foreign port and has to go to a foreign port. Otherwise, they have to pay United States um, taxes and employee rates and, you know, wages. So that's why a lot of them don't register in the United States. Disney Cruise Line ships are registered in the Bahamas. And so because of that, they cannot just dock in Hawaii. So the Hawaiian cruises, the reason there's only two of them is because they have to start in Vancouver, the first one, and go to Hawaii. And the second one starts in Hawaii and goes back to Vancouver, which is a repositioning cruise to get the Wonder ready to do its Alaskan summer cruises, which they do out of Vancouver. So unless this cruise line visits a foreign port, they can't, they cannot dock in Hawaii the whole time. So the only cruise line that has a cruise that goes out of Hawaii on a consistent basis and, and is a round trip Hawaiian cruise, meaning it starts in Honolulu and goes back to Honolulu and is an American based ship is the Pride of America, which is on Norwegian Cruise Line. So I wanted to do the Disney Hawaiian cruise, but it sounds like I'm not going to get to. So I think I'm going to book this one. Um, there are several choices. There's mostly a seven night a Norwegian Cruise Line Hawaiian cruise, and it is offered year round. So you don't have to just go with the two dates Disney has. You can have a choice from year round. It is a round trip from Honolulu, the seven night one. Um, you can cruise Hawaii's four main islands, Oahu, Maui, Kauai, and the island of Hawaii, and you'll be rewarded for your with your choice of purse. So currently for these Hawaiian um, cruises on the Norwegian uh, Pride of America, which has just recently been refurbished, you can choose from these free amenities. You can, if you are staying in a studio, inside, ocean view, or balcony stateroom category, you can choose one of these things. If you are in a suite category, you can choose up to five of these things. You can have all five if you want them. So here is the free at sea offers for Norwegian Cruise Line on the seven night Hawaii Honolulu round trip sailing. Um, you can get a free one night pre-cruise hotel stay. You can get a free specialty dining package. You can get a free prepaid service charges, which is gratuities. You can get a free $50 shore excursion credit per shore or per um, port is what I understand on this. And then third and fourth passenger can sail free. They cannot offer the unlimited bar or open bar on Norwegian Cruise Line in Hawaii because Hawaii doesn't allow it. So those are the five free at sea things that Norwegian Cruise Line can offer on the Hawaii cruises. Um, now, there is a deal going on with Norwegian for all of their cruises other than Hawaii ones. And here's what it is right now. Norwegian's free airfare plus choose up to five free offers plus free unlimited Wi-Fi bonus. It's up to a $3,000 value if you book a Norwegian Cruise Line cruise and they sail all over the place. So the five free choices on other cruises other than Hawaii are, number one, you could get free unlimited open bar. Number two, free shore excursions. Number three, free specialty dining. Number four, free 250 Wi-Fi minutes. And number five, friends and family sail free. In addition to free airfare, and free unlimited Wi-Fi bonuses on certain ships. So let me tell you what those things include for Norwegian Cruise Line. Also, they have some specialty sailings that they just announced today that are going to be with John Bon Jovi. 
So all the Bon Jovi fans out there, there are two sailings under Ruby, uh, Norwegian Cruise Line that have been announced with John Bon Jovi for 2019. Um, one of them is a Caribbean one. It's called the Runaway to Paradise with John Bon Jovi Cruise. It's April 12th through 16th of 2019. It is Miami to the Bahamas. Then there is a Mediterranean cruise. It's just August 26th through 30th of 2019 from Barcelona to Mallorca. And that is also with John Bon Jovi. Those two are in 2019 on Norwegian Cruise Line. If you're interested, let me know. Um, okay, so the free airfare thing that they offer, guests one and two, so usually the two adults in the room, enjoy free or reduced airfare for round trip flights to eight different port cities. Um, you can touch down in Los Angeles, Miami, New Orleans, New York, Orlando, San Juan, Seattle, or Tampa for an unforgettable cruise to Alaska, Bahamas, and Florida, Bermuda, Caribbean, and more. So that is what the free airfare thing is. Free unlimited Wi-Fi means ocean views and above categories also receive one free unlimited internet package for the stateroom. Share your vacation moments while at sea with unlimited web surfing, social media, and email access. If you've tried to get Wi-Fi on a cruise ship, you know that that is a good deal because it is not cheap. Um, $50 deposits. If you book a 2019 cruise in a mini suite or below category with just $50 deposits per person, uh, that's really cheap because the deposit on a Disney cruise is 20% of the cruise rate. Um, lock in these incredible limited time offers on the vacation of a lifetime and you'll have until 120 days out from your sale date to complete your final payment. Now, these five free offers that I mentioned, let me tell you what they include. So if you get, if you choose the unlimited bar or open bar one, you get wine with dinner, evening cocktails, morning mimosas, free unlimited open bar means guests one and two, the adults, <laughs> will enjoy all the spirits and cocktails, wines by the glass, draft beer, and juice and soda that they want. So that's that, what that one means. Um, the short excursion one, is if you want to go dog sledding Alaska or snorkeling in Belize, you got it, or mamboing the night away in Havana, that too. Explore more of the shore with a free $50 shore excursion credit per port per stateroom. So depending on how many ports you stop at, that's several shore excursion credits. Um, take your taste buds on a trip without setting foot on land with the free specialty dining. Guests one and two will enjoy a three meal specialty dining package put your kids in the kids club and go eat at some of the special dining restaurants <laughs> on the ship. Um, share vacation moments while you're, um, while they're happening with free Wi-Fi. Stay connected with friends and family back home while you're at sea with an internet package time plan. You can post, update, tweet, pin, and more with 250 minutes that you can use anywhere on the ship. It includes one login per stateroom, but choose this offer on select cruises with the free unlimited Wi-Fi option and you'll receive a second login for your stateroom. So that's what that one means. And then the friends and family means invite your friends and family along for the cruise of a lifetime with free extra guests. Guests number three and four will enjoy complimentary cruise fares on select cruises with the free extra guest cruise option available. So that is what those free things mean by Norwegian. Norwegian doesn't ever offer like discounts on a cruise. Like they don't offer them like that. What they do is they discount your deposit like they're doing right now, or they discount, they give you free things like free air or a free pre-night stay in Hawaii or free shore excursions or whatever, like the stuff I just listed. So you'll never see like a deal or a discount come out for Norwegian that's like 25% off of a cruise or whatever. They don't do it that way. They do it this way. And these five free at sea things are always offered on any cruise. So depending on what category level you choose on a Norwegian cruise line, what room you choose, that is how many of those free things you get. So if you're like on an inside state room, you get a choice of one of them. If you're, you know, the next level up would be like, um, um, balcony stateroom or whatever. If you're in or Ocean View, Ocean View stateroom, I think you get up to three, and also the balcony staterooms and above. I believe you can get all five. So, but on this special that includes free air and free Wi-Fi, you have to be on the suite level or above to get those all five. Um, otherwise, you get a choice of different ones. So you don't have to pick all five. That's why it says up to some people don't want it. I don't want free open bar. I don't drink. So, you know, it just depends on what you need, but, um, that, that is up to you and you just tell me what you want and we'll pick those things as we're booking your Norwegian cruise, which I might be booking for myself for 2020 if the Disney cruise line does not have their Hawaii cruises available. So, um, I'm looking forward to it. I think it'd be awesome. And I could still stay at Alani post cruise. So, 
Definitely would work. So if you're interested in that deal that Norwegian's got going on for their 2019 cruises right now, or you want to go on the Bon Jovi cruise, <laughs> one of those two I just mentioned, um, then let me know. All right, that's it. I have done the news for today, and we have talked about the Snow White dining experience, um, and we've talked about you know some other news that's happening at Disney right now. So uh, and other locations. So if you have any questions, obviously, and you're watching this later, just put them in the comments section, either here on YouTube, and I will answer for you. But that is all I have for today. So y'all have a great weekend. I'll talk to you again next Friday. Bye.